Let's look at using the TCA9548 8-channel I2C switch to connect multiple devices that have the same I2C address to a single I2C bus on Arduino. As an example, if we take a look at this list of some devices and their I2C addresses, some sensors may have only one I2C address, others may be configurable between a couple of addresses or many more addresses, I'm going to use several of these PCF8574 GPIO expansion boards. Even though they can have multiple addresses, what if you still want to use so many of these that you run out of addresses and you have to start duplicating? Or what if you have a different board with this chip hardwired to just one address and there's no jumpers? To illustrate the problem and solution, we can look at the datasheet for this I2C switch and take a look at this block diagram here. As an example of when we would want to use an I2C switch module like this, this module has eight channels that you can connect up to the main I2C bus, either one at a time or any combination of them if you want. And the example they give is if you have eight identical temperature sensors, so they all use the one I2C address, you can't put them all on the same bus or they'll all respond at once. So you put each one on a dedicated channel from 0 to 7 on this IC. So if this is Arduino talking to this switch, you would configure the switch to use one channel at a time, and that I2C bus will connect to the main bus over to Arduino, and then Arduino can talk to just that one temperature sensor. Then if you want to talk to the next, Arduino configures the switch to talk to this channel. Then you're still using the same I2C address, because the sensor can only be configured for one, but because you routed a different I2C channel over to Arduino, it's a different physical sensor. Another benefit of using this I2C switch, you can use multiple bus voltages here. If your problem is not the fact that you have duplicate I2C addresses that you need to isolate, but instead you have some sensors that are running at 5 volts, and some that are running at 3.3 volts, you can have all of your 5 volt sensors on one bus with pull-ups to 5 volts, and all of your 3.3 volt sensors on a different bus with pull-ups to 3.3 volts. Then you just switch between the buses depending what sensor you need to talk to, and everything runs smoothly. So you can set up I2C buses that are 1.8 volts, 2.5, 3.3, and 5 volts, and translate between those, while the chip itself can be powered from 1.65 to 5.5 volts. Later in the datasheet, we'll look at a dependency on what VCC can be, depending which I2C bus voltages you're going to run at. And this switch can support bus speeds up to 400 kilohertz. Adafruit has a module that uses this IC, and there's some other clone modules out there. But on the Adafruit website, there's a lot of info on getting it up and running, some wiring diagrams with an example of using two identical sensors, example sketches including a special I2C scanner, so you can check the addresses of items on this entire bus. So let's look through the datasheet a little more. This is the block diagram of what's happening inside the switch. You have your main serial clock and data pins here. So if we just look at serial clock, the pin will come over here to this junction of pass transistors. And depending what channel or channels you turn on, those pass transistors will route the various serial clock and data buses over to the main clock and data bus. The I2C switch itself can be configured to respond on I2C channels 70 through 77 hex. By default, these modules here are configured for channel 70, but there's pins to change that if you want. In order to control which channel or channels are routed to the main I2C bus, we send a control byte to the address of the switch. So in my case, I would send out a byte to address 70, where depending which bit or bits are set to 1, that channel or those channels will be connected to the main I2C bus based on this table. Or if I want to not connect any of those buses to the main I2C bus, I can just send all zeros. Here's a typical application schematic. 
So we can have the chip powered by a certain VCC voltage. We can have our input main I squared C bus operating anywhere from 1.65 to 5.5 with those pull-ups, and the same on any of the individual output channels. But there is a design note regarding choosing VCC depending what voltages we want to run at. If you have a main I squared C bus at 5 volts, and then you have other buses running at 3.3 and 2.7, V pass, which is related to the pass transistors we looked at, must be at or below 2.7 because that's our lowest expected bus voltage that we want to run at. So just forgetting what V pass actually is, just knowing that V pass has to be less than or equal to the lowest bus voltage we plan to use, there's a chart where we can look at V pass versus VCC of the chip. So looking at this chart here, V pass versus VCC, if V pass is 2.7, that corresponds to VCC of 4 volts. And the rule is V pass should be less than or equal to 2.7. So along this plot, V pass is less than or equal to 2.7 if VCC is 4 volts or less. So right here they're saying you could set VCC to 3.3 volts to satisfy this requirement in this example. I found it a little ambiguous trying to figure that out. This just has VCC, but when you look at the data sheet for the automotive spec version of this part, they actually give 2.5 volts as a suggested VCC for this typical application. So here, if we say 1.65 volts is the lowest we are going to use, that means we want V pass to be less than or equal to 1.65 volts as well, and that is somewhere between 2.5 and 3 volts. So VCC should be less than this voltage. So the next one down, that's a standard I squared C bus voltage we could use, is 2.5 volts, and that's what they put in this app note example. So the VCC will depend on what our lowest voltage is on our buses. Here's a demo setup I put together. I'm using three of these PCF8574 GPIO expanders, and I'm just controlling two LEDs on each one just to show that we're talking to each one. And what I have here is two of these GPIO expanders are set for the exact same I squared C address, and the other one has a unique address. Here's how I have it hooked up. Power and ground are red and black, so that just goes to VCC and ground on this module, as well as on each of the GPIO expanders. And all these LEDs have a current limit resistor to VCC as well. And now the blue and orange are the serial clock and data for all of these modules. Arduino talks to the switch IC on the main I squared C bus. Then depending how we configure this switch, We'll either be able to talk to either of these GPIO expanders on channel 7, or we can talk to this one GPIO expander on channel 2. Here's the sketch I put together. The I squared C switch module is address 70, and here's the addresses of the GPIO expanders I want to control, so I configure those here. And in the sketch, I'm just going to call those GPIO expanders bus 1 and bus 2, but it's really channel 2 and channel 7 in the schematic, so we initialize I squared C with the wire.begin, and I have a couple of functions down here. One is called TCA select, which actually comes from Adafruit's examples, TCA being the I squared C switch module chip. When you call this function, you give it a channel number from 0 to 7, and it will turn on that I squared C channel to connect Arduino to it. So we begin transmission at address 70 hex to talk directly to the switch IC, and we send it data that represents the channel we want to turn on. So let's say we turn on channel 2, so we've basically wired this straight through. Now we can just pretend this switch isn't even here, and we can just talk to address 20 and get this GPIO expander to respond. So here I want to send all ones to all of those GPIO expander outputs to turn all the LEDs off. So I first select bus number one, and that allows me to talk to this first GPIO expander on address 20, my first address. I send out all ones, and that goes through this switch 
down to this device address 20. All ones get set on this port. So now I have 5 volts on both sides of this LED and they're all off. Now I need to talk to these other two GPIO expanders and turn those LEDs off. So now I select bus 2. That opens a channel to these other two GPIO expanders. So one by one I send all ones to those port pins and we are now done the setup. And this send byte function, I just wrote that. It will start a transmission to whatever I squared C address I chose and it would send whatever byte out to that device. It just allowed this to look cleaner. Now in the main sketch, if I want to do the certain LED blink pattern on all of those modules, one by one I select whichever I squared C bus I want to talk to, send out a bunch of bits representing an LED on and off pattern to the certain GPIO expander's address, wait half a second, send out a different LED pattern to that same device and wait, then turn the LEDs off, and I have this extra end transmission. That was before I created this separate function. Let me fix that. Refresh the page. And fixed. So we turn on the other I squared C bus, talk to the other two GPIO expanders and configure the LEDs whatever way we want. Then we are done. We start over on the first bus and create the blink pattern over and over. So there's an example using an I squared C switch when you need to connect up multiple devices with the same address when you can't change the configuration but you can split them out onto individual buses where they can't see each other and talk to them as needed one by one. If you found this useful, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I'll see you on the next video.